It was a tale of two ball games here at Bob Wren Stadium as the Southern Ohio Copperheads split a doubleheader with the Lexington Hustlers. And Jake, it began with the first game where it was a pitcher's duel, but really it came down to errors once again as Southern Ohio was not crisp in the field and it came back to haunt them. Yeah, they made a few mistakes for errors. And once again, it was errors that you usually don't make. And it seemed like they compounded it. And it was a difference in the game. It was ruled only one earned run as Eric Frederick was, you know, was very good in his, uh, in his start in that game, but the airs came back to haunt him. The bats did not come when they needed it. They did not get the clutch hits. They did not hit with the runners in scoring position. It was a rough game and they lost three to one, uh, but the second game we saw some improvement. Yeah, and we talked to head coach Chris Moore and obviously he was frustrated about what had happened in the first game. He doesn't like to lose, it's obvious, but he did say that he didn't think it was something that was gonna be compounded or continue to hurt the team along the way. Clearly, clearly, it's a problem, and it, it had it had an effect on you know on the first game for sure, and, and showed itself a little bit during the second game. But I, I mean, I don't think it's something that's in these guys' head. I, I think it's just you know you, you make a couple bad plays, and, and, and you know if, if you make bad plays, you're supposed to give up runs. So um, you know, it, certainly, certainly, we need to clean it up uh, a little bit. But I, I'm not too concerned about their um, you know about their long-term well-being and their their mental health over this. They'll they'll, they'll bounce back. I, I suspect at any point we just need to start playing a little bit. However, in that second game, as the coach said, the team did bounce back. They took care of Lexington by a final score of 10 to 8. The offense was much better. Lexington helped a bit with some walks and, and all that kind of stuff. And then Adam Anawalt was fantastic with the start. Yeah, Adam Anawalt, six innings pitched, six strikeouts, only gave up two runs on a few hits, and, and was very good. Only five hits given up, I believe. And, and he was very good. Um, obviously, his second start, and he, he's beginning you know, to set a trend and become a dominant starter for this team. He came in after a rough, you know, a rough game in the first game of the doubleheader and pitched very well and you know, helped set things up for that win. Was very good. And then obviously Matt Kalam was excellent, you know, as a hitter for for the for the Copperheads. Uh, came in on Monday, flew in late, started the season late, but since then he's been on a tear. He's come in, he's hitting over 500. He had four RBIs in the second game. He's patient as a hitter, got a few walks, got hit by pitch, walked two runs in in the second game, uh, aside from an RBI two RBI base hit. Uh, so him and Adam Animal really set things up for that second win and were huge uh, for the Copperheads to get back to 500. And the 10 run output was. One of the best that we've seen from the Copperheads all year. They connected on all cylinders as far as the offense is concerned. And both Matt Glom and Adam Anawalt thought that it was really important that they could bounce back in such a way. Oh, that's huge. Just coming back from doubleheader on the back end of it, just fighting back and getting that W was big for our team. I mean, it really took a lot of courage for us to come out and play like that. You know, I just I just, I just tried to do my part and keep the guys like into the game. Um, you know, like, like I said before, I like to work quick and throw strikes and if I'm doing that then getting through the inning quicker and they're on their toes they know what's coming and so I mean I guess there's not a whole lot that I could really control other than what I'm doing and I did my best today to keep them in the game and let them have the best opportunity to win. With the victory Southern Ohio goes to five and five on the regular season and they'll be back in action tomorrow as they play the fourth time in three days and Jake now it's becoming one of those things where it's all about battling the fatigue. Yeah and tomorrow they'll board the bus at 11 in the morning they'll be on the road in Dayton which is about two and a half hour drive uh, so they have that game at four and it'll be on copperheadsbaseball.com we'll have the call for that one um, but yeah the fatigue is there starting to set in coach Moore talked about it after the game he said that you know this team uh, you know it's 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 a grind every day you know it's it's a grind for this team, a couple long days, so they'll be on the road before an off day Monday. So tomorrow will be a test for fatigue for this team. They beat Dayton in the first matchup, but on the road, they start a three-game road uh, road stand. Um, so it, it'll, it'll be a tough game on the road, but uh, you know, fatigue is something that you know this team is, is starting to get used to. So as we lead into tomorrow's game, make sure you check out all of our media. We have all kinds of stuff for you there. And also make sure you listen to Jake and I on the broadcast as we'll be on again. Copperheadbaseball.com for all road games. But with that being said, he's Jacob Corgan. I'm Ryan Boyd, and this has been a Copperheads Recap.